Hi everyone, my name is John Leitch and welcome back to another Data in the Wild episode hosted by Data Mini. Before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to the channel below and click the bell to turn on notifications to be the first to know every time we upload a new video. Today we are going to be talking about the XML Parse tool, this is part 1 of a 2 part series. Now, when you get a file that is in the format of XML, you can use rejects or even text to columns to break it down, but when that doesn't work, you have the XML Parse tool here in the Parse tab that you can use to break down your data. By default, every time you use an XML file, Alteryx will have the return child values set to active and everything else disabled. In this example here, we have a simple email XML where we have a name here, where a from here, a subject and a body. Now, notice that when we have the return child values, only the body is being shown. Why is that? This is called a root and those are called childs. When we ask Alteryx to return child values, it will get the root here and then ask what's the child, but F all those four lines are childs, so it will only bring the last one. If we want to get the other lines, we have to make some changes in the default configuration. Now let's say we activate the return root element here and then return child values. You can see down below here in the preview that it will bring the email, the to, from, subject and body. Now, the email here is blank, and why is that? It's because I don't have anything written here. If I have something like test and refresh here, you see that now it has information. But this doesn't usually happen when you have an XML file. Some information will be left out blank. Let me just run the workflow so we can check the results here. It will have imbe embedded new lines because we have an enter here for going down below, but we won't be using this information, we won't be using those. Now we have so many other options we can use to get those informations. Now let's say here we activate return root element, disable child values and activate alter XML. You can see here in the browse that we will have the information as it's been seen inside the text file. How can I break the information like this? We have some options here. Now, by adding the XML parse tool, I changed the column to use the outer XML, which has the information for the text, and then I activated the root and return child values. If I see here, I'll get the exactly same result as the one above. Now, we also can use the auto detect child and specific child name, but in this case, if I use the auto detect child, it will only bring the last child as seen in the default configuration. So this is not the optimal way to use XML parse in this file. In the last part, we have the specific child name where we can set what we want. So in this example here, I wrote only to get down the true information and I have the return child values and return outer XML set down here enabled just so we could see what it gives us here. Now, there is no correct or wrong way to use the XML parse. It all depends on the information or the text you're using. In this next example, we have some bigger data where we have our root, then every food item is a child of breakfast menu and every name, price, description and calories are a child of food. So how can we get this information? If we try using the last method that is return root element and return child values, we won't be getting any information. And why is that? It's because food by itself doesn't contain data. We need to get the child elements of food and not food itself. So we couldn't use this just to parse the information. Now, if we get the 
root element and the outer XML just to read the text file like we are seeing here, we can use the XML parse tool to break down the information as we want. So here, if I try to check the root and return child values as we could see above, we won't be getting anything. Now if I click here and change to auto detect child and return child values, we'll get one line for every information we have. Notice that in this part here, in the above part, we only have one line because we only have one information. As we have five food items here, we'll be getting five different lines inside here. And then after I use this, I can just put a select here to remove those columns because they won't be used for anymore and I'll have the data broken down. Also, I can have a specific name here and I can have just what I want. So for example, if I just want to get the price or if I just want to get the name, I can put them here and then I'll have the information. Now, if I want to get the price and the name, I'll have to link multiple parse tools like I, I put up one parse to here, one here, one next, one next, and I can connect them in a series to get the information I want to break down. Now, how do I deal with bigger data? So in this example here, I have some big XML file with many different information and many different levels. So in this example, I have a clinical study, which is the root, and then the required header, which is the child, and the required header has also three childs here. Then I have ID info, which also has some childs. Then in this example here, I have the sponsor, which has a child called lead sponsor, which has childs called agency and agency class. So this is the root, the child, the grandchild, and even here we have a next level. So this information here, we have to add some extra steps to break it down. Here we can see that I added the text file I didn't copy and paste it as an input just so you could see that we can also use the normal text input to use this XML parse tool. Here I'm trying to get the root element and all of the child values and you can see that it brings me some information but it doesn't have everything I want. So for example here we have location. If I go down here to location, let's find it here. I have facility, then I have name, then I have address, then address has city, state and country. I don't have any information at all about the location here because it has child values under it and Autorix can't find it by default. If I come here and try to get auto detect child, it will be behaving as the first example. It will only go to the last available child and get the information for that. So in this example here we have mesh term which is the last and most nested child here and you get those informations for us. Now I can use the specific name to get what I want. So here I have the study design info. If I come back here, let's find it. I'll have intervention model, primary purpose and masking. So I have those data here. Now let's say I want to get the facility which is under location. If I type in location, I won't get anything because it will go to facility and facility doesn't have anything written down here. So I need to get facility to get the name. But if I check the address, I, it will still be empty. So if I want to get the address, I'll have to type in here address. And here, if I type in mesh term as we see above here, you see that even though condition browse has four mesh terms and intervention browse has one, it will give us all of those blocks, the ones above here and the ones below. This also happens when we try to request for text block. We have a text block here, we have a text block here and we have a text block here. If I write down here text block, I'll have all of those informations here. In the XML files, those groups usually have different names, so this wouldn't happen but in this example I found that we have the repeating names inside those blocks. Now what if I want to get every single information inside this text file? So if I count here all of those data that's in black I'll have 44 lines and down here we also have some types inside those two lines. 
So in total, we will have 46 lines of data that we want to retrieve from the XML file. We have some ways to do that, and I'll show one that's not the optimal way, the best ways will be shown in the second part of this video. And in this example here, we'll treat individual blocks and one at a time. So let me enable this. Now, what am, am I getting here? The first block, I'll get the root and the return child values. Let me just run the workflow so we can see the data. This will bring me every information that I have and that can be retrieved at first. So in this example here, I have clinical study. I won't be getting this, I won't be getting this, but I can get the brief title as it is a child of a clinical study. I can get this, but I can get source, I can get this, I can get this, but I can get overall status, I can get phase, and any other information that is a first child of root. So I get those informations, I use the transpose tool to break it down into rows, I select just to remove the first field as I won't be needing it anymore, a data cleansing to remove the extra spaces here and then a filter just to get what I want. So here we have 16 lines. Now let's get the required header info. So here I have the specific name, I have the exact same steps, and down here I'll have the data I want, which are those three lines. Then I can use the ID info. It's the same thing as above. I'll just type in ID info, return child values, break down everything and then I have the information. I'll be doing this for every single block I have. So you can see that this becomes very big and it's not optional to work like this. But if you check here the results, I'll have all the information I want. And the types, as I've shown down here, they'll become as name underline type, name underline type. If you have, for example, a category here or some other information, Alteryx will read it and then just add an underline and the name that is inside the brackets here. In the next video, we'll be showing how to do this in a better way. Uh, we can treat everything at once or we can use interactive macros just to check information and break down the data we want. So be sure to watch the next part to know how to do this in a better way and thanks for watching the XML Parsu in Alteryx Designer. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please comment down below. Don't forget to subscribe to know when future videos are posted. Thank you for watching.